Today we're going to be talking about one of the most powerful acts in the Bible. It encompasses love, sacrifice, and victory all rolled into one, and none better to talk to us about it today than Dr. Francis Miles. Hi, Dr. Miles. Well, I'm excited. I don't have to be with you guys on something more. <laughs> yes, thank you for being here. And honestly, wow, this is one of the most powerful messages that I have ever heard. Set the stage for us for this teaching today. Well, you know, um, on the we know we all know that on the sixth day of creation, our amazing God made His masterpiece. That's you and I. Yes. Said, so let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then he says something very interesting that will completely change the relationship between God and man here, here on earth. God sovereignly chooses to do this. Hmm. He says, let them, he makes them a commission. Let them, the one we have created, we are creating our image and likeness, let them have dominion. That word dominion is a Hebrew word mamlaka, which literally means let them have complete rulership and complete authority. Wow. He gives us rulership, authority, leadership over this planet. Mm. But that word that them is also uh, carries an exclusivity. He gives, in other words, he gives man exclusive territorial authority over the planet Earth, excluding himself. So that means God and every other spirit would need man's permission in order to enter the world of men. This is what God himself does. Wow. And it changes that relationship between God and man. And unfortunately, we, you know, Adam and Eve mismanaged that connection, yes. th that authority, by aligning with the voice of an unemployed cherubim, Lucifer, mm. who came in the form of a talking serpent and caused them to commit high treason. Yeah. And so God had already told them, if you eat from the, tr the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, on that day you will die. And sure enough, the enemy tempted them and they ate from it and they died and eventually they were driven out of the garden of abundance. But not before God made a promise that I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. Yes, and that promise was he, he had created man, as you said, his prized possession, his yes. masterpiece, <laughs> the one that he desired to have relationship with. And then, of course, there was the fall. Yes. They gave it away. So at this point, you know, of course, God wanted, as you said, to fix it. That's he right. needed a divine plan. What was that plan? Well, one of the things God began to do is, you know, because of the exclusive uh, contract he gave to man, stewardship authority over the earth, God never gave up ownership of the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But he gave us legal authority to govern yes. this, this environment. So that earth now by, by mamlaka or dominion mandate becomes the word of men. So because now they have, they have fallen, God has to find a way to get back into their life legally based upon the law he had already committed. Yes. This is how God now taught them how to build an infrastructure called an altar. So when you go in the Bible, you find that the altar becomes a meeting place. Yes. It's a place of, yes. of div it's where humanity and divinity come together. Because you must understand, God obeys his own word. Once God speaks a word, he ends up obeying it himself. So he could not violate the law of dominion, so he had to find a legal, a, a legal way to get permission from man. So together, working with God, we can begin to fix what has now happened on the planet. So that altar became a meeting place. So the altar wasn't just a physical element. The altar was the meeting place of God. I, I heard you refer to it as <laughs> power station. Yes, it's a meeting place. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a gate between the, realm, the natural and the spirit world. It's a power station because it allows the power of the, of the divine to come in the world of men, legally speaking. Yes. The only problem is the enemy is also a copycat. Mm. He saw how God was coming into the world of men, and therefore because man was fallen and the propensity to, re, to be driven in the direction of sin was very high. So the devil so found a, an entrance, and that's why you begin to find in the Bible, all of a sudden, this evil altar is cropping up. This way it became gates for the demonic world to also come in the world of men, the same way God was coming in with righteous men, men and women of God like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, so tell me just a few ways, what does an evil altar look like in, in someone's life? What, what could that be? Well, an evil altar, one of the ways you can know is that you, there's, you, are, you have an evil altar, you could, you could be dealing with an evil altar in your life or bloodline. 
mm -hmm. is well, you have to understand that one of the features of an altar, and you find this with righteous altars, mm -hmm. you find this with evil altars, which is this altars are always in the Bible as places of ritual. A ritual is something that happens again, again, again. Ritual. A ritual, ritual. yes. <laughs> something that happens repetitively. So I tell people, if you find there's an evil activity in your life, you don't want to be part of it. Like there's an addiction. You don't want mm. to get out of it. I remember right. praying for a man who almost lost his family over addiction to prescription drugs. And he loved the Lord. He was a Christian man. He's like, yeah. I couldn't stop myself. It's, it's something just, room, I mean, he would sneak out in the middle of the night to go and get this until he almost lost his family. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, he's dealing with an evil altar. Don't address the addiction as an addiction. Deal with the evil altar. And I told him about the altar. And in one session, he was fully delivered. Today, wow. that marriage is like heaven here on earth. So an, altar, an evil altar can easily be seen by if there's a ritual, an activity that can mm -hmm keeps happening to you again and again that you know it's not Jesus, it's not God, it's not perpetuating the dynasty of right, God. Right. You know, like you're always angry, or you are always fighting, or you're always losing sick money, or, you're always sick. Yes, you see what yes, I'm saying? Yes. There might be an altar there, an uh, evil altar that the enemy has, has hidden in your bloodline that yes. is allowing, that's, that's a gateway for that particular activity. The good news is the blood of Jesus we're about to talk about is an answer to all that drama. Wow. <laughs> well, let's take a little break. We're going to be back in just a moment. And Dr. Miles is going to talk to us about the seven places where Jesus shed his blood that destroys evil altars. We'll be right back. Call now and get Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book and three-part audio CD teaching series, Dangerous Prayers from the Courts of Heaven that Destroy Evil Altars, and this bonus bookmark, Seven Places Jesus Shed His Blood, an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9765. Do you feel like invisible barriers are keeping you from the life you want? Keeping your prayers from being answered? Well, no more. This dynamic book will help you close demonic entryways, break generational chains of darkness, be set free from areas of sin and bondage, understand how to enter the courts of heaven and access Jesus as your legal advocate, appropriate the mystery of the seven drops of Jesus' blood. Dr. Miles has crafted 36 powerful interactive prayers that will destroy the altars of infirmity and sickness, sexual perversion, poverty, familiar spirits, depression, witchcraft, premature your death, barrenness, fear, delay, trauma, false prophecies, failure, Freemasonry, marriage breakers, demonic spirits, including Jezebel, Leviathan, and Delilah, and so much more. You will also receive Francis Miles' three-part audio CD teaching. CD number one and number two will guide you in destroying evil altars. CD number three provides you dangerous prayers to destroy the seven evil altars connected to the blood that Jesus shed. Plus, you will get Francis Miles' bonus bookmark. We've designed a special bookmark you'll put in your Bible that has those seven points where Jesus shed his blood. Every time you take communion, you're going to be able to do that same prayer just from that bookmark. It's time to destroy the evil altars in your life. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book and three-part audio CD teaching series, Dangerous Prayers from the Courts of Heaven that Destroy Evil Altars, and this bonus bookmark, Seven Places Jesus Shed His Blood, an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9765. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9765 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More, everyone. I'm here with Dr. Francis Miles, and as I said before we went to break, he's going to be teaching us about the seven places where Jesus shed his blood that destroy evil altars. You know, in Leviticus 17:11, God himself makes a very powerful statement. He says, he says that the life of all the flesh is in the blood. He says, I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for the soul, for it is the blood 
that makes atonement for the, for, for, for the soul by the reason of the life it represents. So God is telling us that whatever he, he's telling us that the, that the life of the soul is in the blood. That's very powerful. But he tells you because it's in the blood, I've therefore placed it at the altar or at the meeting place where man and divinity can meet to make exchanges. So the blood is a very powerful vehicle for exchange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this is why Jesus knew his blood will be important for us to exchange our sinful condition for righteousness because God placed that blood on the altar. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you about the seven places where Jesus shed his blood and the evil altars that they destroy in your life. And I believe as you are watching us on something more that those evil altars in your life are going to be destroyed Amen. as we point them out. Yes. Donna, the first time Jesus shed his blood was in the garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Israel in that garden, it's beautiful. You know, when he sweat, sweats of, you know, when the Bible says he sweats drops of blood, drops of blood came out of him in the garden of Gethsemane and uh, he, he the, it hit the ground, mm. you know, and uh, so that was very interesting that the first the drop of blood hit the ground as it came from him. Now, why is that important? Because you remember in that when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, one of the things God told them because of their disobedience that even getting an, uh, even getting um, a provision out of life would be difficult. Mm. They'll be toiling and sweating. And since they the, so toiling and sweating to get a living, just to get by, is the symbol of the curse. Yes. That came because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Yes. So Jesus understands that if we're gonna do destiny, we cannot do destiny while breaking our backs until there's nothing left. There was no time to spend time with your family, no time to spend with your right. children because you are always working, trying to toil and just to get by. So the, the first drop of blood was to destroy the altar, the evil altar that causes people to toil and sweat for everything their entire life. I heard you say curse, so the, the cursing of the ground. Yes. So, so these evil altars are synonymous with the curses that, that came upon us. Exactly. Yes. Yes, they're actually, exactly, they're the manifestation of that curse. Mm -hmm. You know, and so one of them is toiling and sweating. And so Jesus goes in the garden because what's interesting, that Jesus goes in the garden because everything that we're dealing with today began in a garden. You know, God is a master. He always goes back to the beginning. Yes. And so that is the first drop of blood that came from our Savior. The second drop of blood that came from our Savior was when he was struck on the face, mm. you know, uh, on the face with fists and rods. And we find this in the book of Matthew, yes. the gospel according to Matthew 26, uh, verse 63 to 67. So he's beat. Now what is interesting is that we all know our face is important to us. You know, our face is our glory, mm -hmm. you know, especially you ladies, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so the face represents our glory, our self-esteem. And so essentially uh, that drop of blood that comes out of him beat in the face, what it does is that it removes, it removes from our life the, the spirit, it's de it destroys the altar of the spirit of slander. Mm -hmm. Do you know there's nothing that can disfigure a human being than slander? Yes. You know, yes. to be slandered. And the Lord knows that because he experienced all of it. Slander, that's why in most countries now have laws against slander, because slander can contribute in the marketplace today, slander can destroy your reputation because it creates a face of you that yes. is not true. That is not true. A lot. You know, mm -hmm. and there are so many people right now who are dealing with the face the enemy has made of them. That's not them. But I want you to know today that the blood of Jesus is going to restore your glory. The blood of Jesus was shed so that you and I don't have to deal in our life with the sting of slander and low self-esteem because he took those punches right yes. in his face so our face can, can glow in the glory. Yes. I just love it. I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the third time Jesus shed his blood is we taught in Isaiah 50. Verse five to six was when the hair of his beard was pulled out. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very painful way to shed blood. But why, why was this huge? Because remember in, in, the, in the Hebraic culture, the beard of the rabbis, and Jesus was a rabbi, was a symbol of honor and dignity. And so when you pull a man, one of the quickest ways to embarrass a man in Judaism was to pull out the beard. 
That's how you really find to shame somebody. Yes. So the Lord said to me, why, why did I allow that to go? Because one of the things that happened to Adam and Eve, when they fell into sin, they fell under such shame and condemnation. Yeah. So that when the father comes looking for them in the cool of the day, they are hiding behind the trees right. because they are so ashamed. And I've seen people commit suicide because of the spirit of shame. Hmm. I prayed for people who are on their way to commit suicide because of the spirit of shame. And I said, why? Well, I was molested. I wow. feel dirty. I feel like I'm not worth anything. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you that he shed that third drop of blood to destroy the altar of the spirit of shame. And I believe today that God is going to cleanse you of every form of shame, no matter what allowed that altar or that evil thing to come into your life, so you can glow in the glory of a God who loves you and celebrates you. Don't have the fourth time our master and Jesus, you know, shed his blood when he was scourged on his back, mm. you know, by Pontius Pilate. Yes. 39 stripes, the most vicious way you could Poo. I mean, it was the most, I mean, according to Josephus, which is a, a Hebrew scholar, uh, this punishment was so severe that some people didn't even last two slashes, three right. slashes. Our right. Lord endured 39 slashes. And now the Bible tells us why, why did they do it? For our healing. Yes. So these fourth drops of blood was to deal with the healing of any kind of disease. You might be here on something more, and the something more you need is a healing from cancer, is a healing from something that is got, is got to you going to a doctor, doctor after doctor. I, would, I really even sense a healing anointing right now, Donna. I really believe God is healing people right now because Jesus was coached on his back so you and I can be healed. Let's do this when we come to a place like this and. You know, I am feeling that, you're feeling that. Why don't we pray uh, specifically for healing right now as yes. we go through these? That's yes. right. Right now, I, I release the healing. Whatever you are, put your hand on your body and just say, Lord, I'm claiming that fourth drop of blood. I'm claiming it for me against the cancer, against the diabetes, against uh, 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 the blindness, against the deafness, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and let us know, let, let us know, let us, let us know what God did for you because I can sense healings are happening, Donna, right now mm. in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Praise God. <laughs> so the fifth time that the Lord, you know, sheds his blood is on the crown of thorns. Remember the a crown, the, the soldiers were trying to make a mockery of him mm -hmm. because they're saying, you know, it was a mockery for them. But they don't understand that they were actually allowing God to reverse what had happened in the Garden of Eden because God had talked about thorns and thistles in the Garden oh, of yes. Eden. Yes. So they carried a crown of thorns and thistles and they put it around the scalp of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, and, 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 uh, and, and the, the Bible says this in, in, in the Genesis 3, it says, the ground is now under a curse because of you. In sorrow and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles, they shall grow for you and you shall eat the plants of the, of, of, of the thing. So essentially, uh, the thorns and thistles come to represent a spirit mm. that even has entire nations under its grip. You know what spirit we're talking about, Donna? The spirit of poverty. Oh, Whew. I can guarantee you God is not a God who enjoys you being poor. He, God hates what the spirit of poverty does to people. It makes them, I mean, it makes them cheat, lie. It makes them even sometimes sell their bodies because they just want to put food on the table. Right. You know, right. I remember an evangelist who, uh, a friend of mine, uh, I mean, led, led this woman who came to Christ and she was a prostitute and she was weeping. I said, why are you weeping? I said, I, said, I feel the joy, but I'm also scared. Why are you scared? It's because I'm a prostitute. I've no, I'm not educated. I don't know how to take care of my children. What do I do? They, they end up giving her a job. But my point is the spirit of poverty has made people, God's creation, do things sometimes are horrible to each other or do things to the other. Can I submit to you today that there's an anointing coming through the air right now to destroy the spirit of poverty. The blood of Jesus was shed so you can enjoy the blessing of your father Abraham in Jesus' name. So I unlock your finances right now by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. That's right, because he did not come to give us lack. We are not to live in lack, but in provision. 
Yes. He has provided. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the sixth time our Lord Jesus sheds the blood, his precious blood, Glory mm -hmm. to God, is when he was crucified. Yes. Now, now, now remember when you're crucified, you, the, to be crucified, so you can hang on the cross, they have to nail your hands and feet. That's the yes. only way you can be crucified. So they nailed his hands and feet. Right. You know, but remember, uh, Jesus is our substitute. Everything that happens to him is a reversal for us because he came to be the, our substitute for everything. Yes. So, so what happens is this, the Lord said to me, Francis, do you know what hands and feet? Hands and feet represent balance and they also represent productivity. He said to me, Francis, when they, when, 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 when the, when they, uh, when the nails hit uh, my hands and hit my, my feet, by the blood of Jesus Christ, the work of your hands was released. The mm -hmm. enemy can no longer hold the work of your hands. You know, your destiny, because, you know, feet represent destiny. You know, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God said, every evil ought assigned it to arrest the work of your hands. Mm -hmm. It was broken because my, my bloody hands are evidence. Whatever you touch ought to be blessed. Powerful. You know, uh, my hands, my bleeding feet are evidence. Whatever you are called to walk in in this life, whatever the destiny I gave you to walk in, no devil, no demon, no witchcraft can stop you. Just remember the blood, will, I mean, my feet, my blood soaked feet means you can work it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. I mean, and so it, it is powerful to me what the blood of Christ accomplished for us on that beautiful cross of Calvary. And even before getting to that, and then the seventh time that Jesus sheds his blood is when his side was pierced mm -hmm. by the spear. This is a, actually it happens when he has already said it is finished. And then a soldier you know, the Bible says in John 19, 34, it says, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came flowing out. Yeah. You know, Donna, two things come out of this that are very, very powerful. One is that, you know, when a woman's water breaks. Yes. She's given birth. Yes. You know, what, when you see what, blood and water, you know, a woman's, the baby's about to come home. <laughs> it's about to come. So this is a prophetic, face, face a prophetic picture of the church of the bride of Christ being born. Because mm. remember, Adam had to be put to sleep in order for Eve to come. So the last Adam is put to sleep on the cross for us to come. To be born. So thank God for the blood. We are, we, in other words, we are the result of the blood <laughs> coming out. But, but, but also, it also speaks about a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so the, one of the things the blood of Christ does, I tell people, is it will destroy the evil order of a broken heart. I have wow. seen people wow. went through a devastating divorce, lost their loved ones, mm -hmm. and they're like zombies. Mm -hmm. Their heart is broken. And so God delivered them mm -hmm. when I told them about the blood. You know, the power of the blood. That even though your heart has been broken, the blood of Jesus can put it back together. Mm. So you can begin to live with the supernatural vigor for life and destiny, because that's the reason why he shed his blood in those seven right. places. I'm sure there's so many people that are watching us today that have in some form or another suffered a broken heart. Let's pray for them before we move on. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'm sensing there's somebody watching us right now. Your heart is so broken, you have been contemplating suicide. I believe this show is a divine interception for you. The Lord wants you to know He loves you. The Lord wants you to know your destiny has just begun. So right now, by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come and we agree with you. We agree with, with Jesus. We agree with the Word of God that you will live and not die and declare the God of the Lord. We are asking God to heal your broken heart in Jesus' name because if anybody knows what the feeling of a broken heart, it was Jesus who was abandoned by all of us uh, through to the painful death of the cross. But he, right now, he, God is rescuing you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, we've got a couple of minutes left. And <laughs> as I told you, I, I came up as a Baptist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one of the, the uh, charismatic, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost girl now. <laughs> yes. but, but one of the things that we always made sure that we did was give people an opportunity yes. to experience that power that's My in the God. blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you take a couple of minutes and lead us? Praise Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. The blood brings redemption. If there's nothing, that's the most important thing the blood does. 
Yeah. There's, there's so many things the blood of Christ does. But I can tell you, one of the most significant is the fact that your soul can be redeemed. 1989, I heard the gospel. I told, the preacher told me I could run to the altar and as dirty as I felt, as sinful as I was, the blood would cleanse me. I've never looked back. Amen. You may be watching today and maybe you walked away from God. Maybe you've never had a chance to give your life to Jesus. Well, this is your time. Yes. The blood is speaking right now that you can be redeemed. So right now, I just wanted to pray this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly I believe Heavenly. that you love me. That you love me. And I believe that Jesus, Yeshua, is your son. I believe Jesus is your son. That he suffered under Pontius Pilate. That he was buried, that he was crucified. He was buried and he was resurrected on the third day. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to accept me as your child. Yes. Holy Spirit, come into my heart by the blood of Jesus and make me a child of God. Heavenly Father, may the blood of Jesus wash me from all my sin. If you prayed that prayer, I can tell you with absolute certainty that you are born again. You are now a child of God. You are saved, delivered by the blood of Jesus. Welcome to the family of God. <laughs> Amen. That's one of those wow messages, isn't it? That leads yeah. you right up to accepting <laughs> Jesus, you know, taking yes. advantage and experiencing it is the power in Donna, blood. it is the greatest miracle. Wow, it is the greatest miracle. I want to remind everybody that's watching of one quick thing before we leave. You actually have a brand new show, a regular show, <laughs> New on the ISN network, and yes. as Sid would tell you, the <laughs> ISN network, the It's Supernatural Network, 24-7, you can access it. What's the name of your show? It's called Our God of Wonders. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a half an hour program, and it's you. What what do you do on the show? You're teaching. You're we focus on the supernatural. Wonderful. We focus on the Wonderful. principles that unlock miracles, signs, and wonders. Because I think that we don't have enough of that. Thank God for Sid Roth. Yes. You know, and uh, so it's, we focus on that. So every show we we teach, and then we show a visual story of a miracle or something happening to tell Wonderful. people our God is still wonderful. Amen. <laughs> I love the name. Well, let me tell you and encourage you to look for Dr. Francis Miles on the ISN Network with our God of Wonders. Be sure and join us next time on Something More.